Hi, I'm Elizabeth Myers. And I'm Scott Hosbach. Thanks for joining us on this episode of College Matters. In our first segment, we are going to discuss the various aspects of the International Students Program. Sounds fun. But Elizabeth, how would you like to go to London, England? Absolutely, I'd like to go right now. Well, in segment two, we're going to show people on how they can go across the pond and get an education. That sounds great, but I'm really excited about our last segment because we're going to discuss how the ESL program has helped many people to achieve their educational and career goals. So don't go anywhere because College Matters is starting now. This program was produced entirely by students in the Broadcast and Electronic Media Department at the College of San Mateo. Welcome back to the show. I would like you now to meet Mr. Gerald Frazetti from the International Students Program and Svetislav Mandev, a student of the program. Thanks for coming in today. Mr. Frazetti, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Svetislav, welcome. Thank so, Mr. Frazetti, tell me a little bit about you personally, how you came to come to this program here, and the parts that you play here. Well, I'm the uh, International Student Advisor on okay. campus, and I uh, I'm also the director of the, the program, right. the International Student Program. I uh, started working with international students in about 1971. Uh, in graduate school, I became very interested in teaching English as a second language. And I came here actually to teach English as a second language and became involved with the internationals at that time. Uh, I also was a teacher of English literature and composition, but now I'm full time in the International Student Program. She's been very rewarding. So altogether, I've been here about 30, 30 plus years. That's a long time. Really you is. must really love what you do. I enjoy what I do. In fact, I, I tell people I'm very fortunate that uh, my work is also my fun. And I have Svetislav here as a, as a proof of that as well. That's Thank you. excellent. Thank you. Svetislav, tell me a little bit about you, where you have come from, what country of origin you are okay. originally from, yes. and how you came to be here at the College of San Mateo. Well, uh, I was born in Bulgaria, which is a small country in Eastern Europe. And um, I came here in uh, July 2002 and uh, started attending the College of San Mateo in uh, August same year. Um, and basically what happened, uh, I knew about the college prior, prior to my coming here from my <coughs> sister. Uh, my sister has lived here for about eight years. Uh, she attended the college several y years ago. and. Um, in fact, we've always, we've always known that I would attend the college in case I came here, which here I am, it happened, which I'm very grateful. Um, and uh, right now I'm in my last semester at the college and uh, that's, that is basically the, my story so far. Okay, now what are you specifically studying? Are you doing general education or do you have certain career goals that you're trying to achieve? Are you gonna transfer to a four-year college? What's going on with that? Well, um, in fact, I think uh, all students have to do some general edu education. Um, I, I personally have almost finished that general education uh, course program and um, I'm planning to transfer to a four-year college where um, I intend to study computer science and hopefully earn a degree in that field. That's exciting. Yes. And you said you have only one semester left. Uh, this is my last semester. Spring 2004 is my last semester at CSM. Well, that's really exciting. So you're going to be graduating this year then? Uh, yes, from CSM. And transferring? Yes, that's correct. Excellent. Do you know what school you're going to go to? 100%? Actually, yeah, I'm still awaiting response from uh, the universities I applied to. So I'm Excellent. I hope you hear back very, very soon. Yes, I, I think I will. And thank you. It's, I'm very excited, really. Congratulations. It's a lot of work. But it's well worth it, isn't it? It is totally worth it. Definitely. I'm more than 100% worth it, yes. Definitely. Mr. Frazetti, tell me a little bit about um, when an international student comes here or wants to come here mm -hmm. and enroll in one of the district colleges. What is the first step that they have to take? What Do they have entrance exams? Do they have 
money requirements? Do they, what do they have going right. on? Uh, normally, we have a, uh, a special application for international students. Okay. Uh, they contact us either directly uh, uh, coming into the office, if they happen to be in the United States, or a relative <coughs> will come in uh, and pick up the application. Uh, it's available online, and uh, they can download it and fill it, uh, email it, or, or mail it to us, or uh, fax it to us. We look for a variety of uh, things. First of all, we're required to uh, assure the college and the U.S. government that the student has finances available to uh, cover the cost of living and uh, being educated in the United States. But in addition to that, we look for high school graduation. We mm -hmm. normally look to see that the student has a good academic record. And we also look to see um, uh, what the major is. If we can offer the major, then we uh, let the student know. If we can't offer the major, then we offer suggestions on where the student might find that major at another school, preferably at one of the other colleges in the district. Now, but it's acceptable for them to come here just to do GE requirements it is. too, yes? It is, yes. Uh, as okay. long as they have a, a general idea and a, a goal and a plan, this is, this is enough for us. It satisfies us. Uh, we like them to have a little bit more of an idea, but you know, when you're 18 or 19 years old, or even a little bit you older, you don't know exactly unfamiliar. what you really exactly. want to do. It's rather and young. And so, uh, this is one of the things that uh, we caution the student about: not to make a decision too fast, uh, right. but to right. to be ready to make a decision. After they fill out the application and submit the uh, proof of their uh, finances, we also look for English skills. Okay. Uh, the universal <laughs> test, I think, is TOEFL, Tested English as a Foreign Language, which is offered worldwide. Okay. So a student takes that exam and uh, with a certain score then shows eligibility and okay. uh, then the rest uh, moves on from there. We uh, admit the student, uh, send the necessary government documents uh, with which they can get the, uh, the visa, the, uh, the U.S. visa, to come to the United States to study. Okay. Or if they're in the United States already, we initiate a transfer from the previous school to ours. Okay. Svetislav, I have a quick question for you. How did you feel leaving your family, leaving your country of origin, and coming here? Was it really rough? Did you have a lot of support? And you had a sister to come here too, yes? Yes. That's so cool. that helped? Um, that helped a lot, actually. Uh, it, was, it was really rough. It was hard for me. Um, I had all my friends there, of course, uh, that is normal, and uh, I still try to communicate with uh, my best friends. Uh, so you stay close and tight and talking and We stay close as much as possible through email or um, online chat, yes. uh, phone sometimes. And uh, yes, my sister has been great support uh, uh, for me. Actually, I, right now I'm staying with her and her husband, and great. Uh, basically without their support, I, uh, do it. I wouldn't be here in the first place, so um, I greatly appreciate everything they've done for me. And they've obviously really helped you, you know, achieve your goals. That's excellent. Yes, that's definitely, yes. Mr. Frasetti. We just have yes. a few seconds mm -hmm. left. I've got to ask you something. Right. Tell me about a very beautiful story of success that a student um, came through your program. I think you told me a little bit about right. this. Well, we there are many. Cover this. There are many, <laughs> but this one, this one is is uh, exceptional. A uh, a woman from Japan, orphaned at an early age, raised by her grandmother, and then uh, was a caregiver for her grandmother until the grandmother's death. At age 36, came to the United States to study architecture. Uh, she was successful here at College of San Mateo, went on to UC Berkeley, got her degree in environmental design and a degree in engineering at the same time, continued on to MIT where she got an advanced degree in engineering and is now one of a handful of people in the field of acoustical architecture. Incredible story, incredible story. And if it wasn't for your program, it would not have happened. She got her start with us, yes. Thank you so much for coming and sharing your education with us and your history with us. Thank, Thank you. you so our much pleasure. for coming and sharing your story. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Scott Hosbach will be right back. In this segment, we're going to examine the study abroad program from two perspectives. I'd like to welcome Professor Linda Scholler and Violet Tinoco to the show. It's nice to have both of you on board. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Linda, um, 
what do you teach? What is your expertise? I teach English, both composition and literature. And I understand that you're going to be going to London and teaching this in the, uh, uh, in the fall semester? Correct. So you'll be teaching England, English in England. <laughs> yes. Two composition courses and one literature course. And this will be your first time? Absolutely, yes. Now, Violet, you've had a little bit of experience. Of, you've already been through the program. Mm. Uh, but what are, you, what are you currently studying? What is your major? Right now, I'm studying biology. And I'll be heading, hopefully, over to the University of Davis by the time I'm done, in about a year. So you still have a little bit more time here in the community college. Mm -hmm. And you're going to UC Davis. Yes. Excellent. Uh, Linda, can you tell us uh, what the uh, study abroad program is? Tell us a little bit about the program itself. Okay. The program actually is a four consortium program, I mean a four college consortium. We so that would be Kenyatta, Skyline, actually, College of San Mateo? Actually, College of San Mateo represents the entire district. Oh. So it's called College of San Mateo program, but it's totally open to Skyline, College of San Mateo, and Kenyatta students. But we partner with three other Bay Area colleges so that we have four faculty, one going from each college district, and then students drawn from all of those college districts so that it allows a greater variety of courses to be taught. Well, where have we sent our students in the past? What, what the exotic locations? <laughs> well, for exotic, Costa Rica, Mexico, Madrid, Paris, uh, London has been a popular program since 1985, every fall, and Florence. You know, I got a flyer a couple of years ago, two years ago, about going to Florence, and if I had had the money, I would have jumped right on that. Um, Violet, uh, you recently went to London. Why don't you mm -hmm. share with our viewers about your experience there? That was the most wonderful experience I have ever had in my entire life. The people were very pleasant and the museums and everything were extremely uh, great. They were actually free to the public so you could go right inside. It was just a great experience. The people were very nice. Even the families that we stayed with and the AIFS directors and helpers were very nice as well. Well, I think the obvious question, at least from my perspective, is where do you think you learn more? Did you learn more in the classroom or did you learn more going about and just being in another culture and not as a tourist for like five days, mm -hmm. which is what most people do. They hop around from country to country. But when you were actually there for like three months. Yes. What, where did you learn the most? The most I learned was outside with the people. Um, like you said, three months, you become a resident. You start getting asked for directions and people, you know, just kind of pass you by or because you're just a Londoner, you acclimate to their ways and so you know exactly what what they're doing and how to act with them. Uh, can you tell us uh, what other supplementary packages are offered with a semester in London this, this coming semester? Um, there will be a pre-program trip that will be to Paris and to Brussels and to Bruges, and students can take part in that for an extra cost. Then once they're in um, London, there will be Friday programs available for day trips to Stonehenge or to Cambridge, um, perhaps bath, things like that. And then every week there's a Monday lecture and a Wednesday field trip built into a course that's mandatory for every student called British Life and Culture. And I think that's where the students really get immersed in the history, the economy, the um, politics, and the culture in general. I would imagine that you're really looking forward to this. I am. I, 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 I am very much. I'm as eager as the students. I would surprise me if you said anything <laughs> otherwise. Um, what kind of a student do you have to be? Is this something that is uh, just for straight A students? Because Violet sounds pretty smart here. <laughs> She's impressing me too. Uh, you have to have a 2.5 in 12 units of college level coursework. And while you are there, you must stay enrolled in 12 units of coursework also. One of those courses is the British Life and Culture course. So in addition to that, you take three other academic courses. Well, even a dummy like me can handle 2.5. <laughs> oh, I, I, I would qualify for that. And if I had the money, I'd do it. Um, I want you to elaborate a little bit on the kind of the cultural enrichment uh, uh, and field trips that will be available for the next sem semester. Well, as part of the British Life and Culture course, for example, and probably Viola could answer this from her experience, but uh, there is a lecture about the Houses of Parliament and then a field trip to the Houses of Parliament. There is, for example, a lecture on theater in London and then That's a trip a to must. the Globe Theater. That's a must, exactly. though, the Globe Theater. Exactly. Yeah. So all of them are paired very well by the AIFS staff there in London who are experts already in the subject. We faculty from the United States do not teach those classes. 
I uh, read the, um, the, the brochure and it also mentioned a trip to Stonehenge. Correct. Did and your group do that? Yes, we did. We went to Stonehenge and Salisbury. It was a, a day trip and we went from Salisbury, the town, and then saw a magnificent church there. And then we went to Stonehenge and we got a walking tour right around with a little uh, radio thing. And, and they were giving, were they giving you historical facts about the Druids and the, and the yes, Celts? Yes, yes, that was in the um, little video or audio um, cassette that we got. And we just walked around and you would press the numbers and you got the entire, the entire thing from that. Well, that sounds fascinating. It is. Uh, it also said something about uh, Stratford-on-Avon, and that, of course, is the birthplace of the bard, mm -hmm. uh, William Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. uh, did you do that one? Unfortunately, I did not get oh. to do that one. Oh, <laughs> I was hoping for some good news there. <laughs> no, I, I didn't do that one. I did, however, go to Bath as well, and that's definitely worth a trip. And I went on um, a couple of the other things, Tate Modern uh, Museum and also the Globe Theater. The Globe Theater is definitely something that you need to go did and Did you see a performance? Yes, I did. I saw The Taming of the Shrew. Ooh. Oh. It was wonderful. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. You know, you would be better qualified than anybody to talk a little bit about the associated costs with a trip like this, because we are talking about a three-month time period of mm -hmm. time in a foreign country. So, tell us all the little. Tell us. Give us the real skinny. <laughs> okay. Well, you have the seven thousand dollars automatically. I believe it was seven thousand dollars for the trip itself. And does that include the the room? Um, yes, I believe it does. Okay. Okay. So you have your room, your school. That does not include textbooks. So you need to buy your own textbooks. Okay. Um, you get them here. But then you have an additional, they say, $3,000, roughly, for, um, for just general expenses, uh, food and you know, going out. You also need to make room for traveling. So if you want to go to Italy or something like that, you need to have You can afford that. That's in the budget money. there, too. And also for gifts. You want to have some money for gifts and things if you're going Briefly, to Briefly, tell us, and I know the answer already, but do you think it was worthwhile? Oh, yes. Definitely. I would recommend it to anybody to do it. It's a life-changing experience. Well, I want to thank both of you for being here and sharing your experience, Violet, and your expectations, Linda. Thank you. Uh, don't go away because uh, segment three is coming right up with Elizabeth. What do you do if you recently immigrated to the United States and you want to learn English or come to college? Joining me now in the studio is Professor Gary Nickel and Manuel Murcia, a student at the College of San Mateo. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you for coming to College Matters. Thank you. So, Mr. Nickel, tell me about you. Tell me how you came to the College of San Mateo. Tell me what you do here in the ESL program. Well, Elizabeth, I currently teach at Skyline College. That's the sister school to yes. uh, College of San Mateo. Okay. I've been at Skyline for 14 years. I've taught English for 20 years. I've taught abroad in Yugoslavia for a couple of years. I've taught in uh, Sweden, taught on the East Coast. Um, but Skyline's where I make my home now. Great. Excellent. So tell me a little bit about your love for other languages. So did you gain a love or respect for other languages when you were doing these travels? Yes, uh, as many people, I uh, was uh, uh, spoke, sp I studied Swedish and I lived in uh, Sweden as a uh, junior year abroad when I was a, a student at UC Santa Cruz. So um, lots of ESL teachers were uh, language majors and that's how they end up uh, uh, teaching English. It's uh, very often easier to find a job teaching uh, English than it is Swedish. <laughs> oh, I think so. I think so. So you have a lot of love for international students then? You bet. Definitely. And that's where your heart is. Yes. It's a, it really is a dream job. It's an awful lot of fun. So you, you love meeting and greeting students from other lands and helping help them get adjusted what I like here. best about the ESL students is that they come from uh, such uh, an array of backgrounds that it's, it's really working with adults and uh, there's so much that you can learn from them that, uh, you know, it's a pleasure every day in class. It really is. That's awesome. Manuel, tell me a little bit about you, how you came here, and what you're doing here. Sure, yeah. Uh, well, um, I came to the United States two years ago. And well, my first thing in mind was uh, learn sp English. 
uh, besides Spanish, actually, is my native language. And what I decided, uh, my brother was already here, so he helped me out a lot, and he, he um, encouraged me to go to uh, school, you know, to learn English. So uh, first of all, I started to go to the adult school, okay. and here is a part of San Mateo, you know, high school district. And I was there for uh, about uh, one year, and then I, I decided uh, to come over to the College of San Mateo. And why to the College of San Mateo? Because I live close to you know, and a lot of friends, uh, you know, they they are already they, they were come yeah to, they, to CSM. yeah exactly yeah. So I guess I got here just because of that, and I think it was uh, it's a nice uh, college. It's a beautiful campus. Very nice campus too. Yeah, and it's really. Uh, it, a lot of things, you know, uh, it's very nice, yeah. So tell me a little bit about when you started taking ESL classes. Um, now, where are you originally from? Yeah, El Salvador. El Salvador. Yeah, yeah. Central America. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. So when you came here, you immediately immersed yourself in ESL classes. Exactly, yeah. Right. And how did you feel about the adjustment to coming to the United States? Was it very difficult? It it was hard, yeah, but I, I, I really had uh, some background about English too in my country. My, my okay. That I started, uh, you know, in my, my uh, <coughs> high school, and uh, they uh, teach us uh, English too, so I was in that 0% of English, you know. Oh, that's so, yeah. good. So it helped uh, a little bit. Oh, yeah. The fact lot, yeah. that it was a second yeah. language but in your country. But still hard, you know, a little bit. Because <laughs> it's not the same, you know, being in, in another country, foreign country, than being in right. the, the United States, you know, in the United States. So. So was it difficult to enroll in college? So you first took some ESL classes, and then yeah. your family, who has been a support to you, exactly, yeah, yeah. They, they they encouraged you. Hey, you know what? Why don't you just go to college too? Yeah. Now you got uh, the, your English. Uh, your level of English is, very, is uh, enough to go to college. So yeah, they told me that, and I just followed their, you know. Their suggestions. Exactly, it's just Jackson, yeah. Now you did it willingly, right? Uh, yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> they didn't make you do it. <laughs> so are you enjoying yourself here at course, the College yes. of San Mateo? Yes, I'm, yeah. I'm and really did, did the ESL classes really kind of bring you up to a level where you were able to understand English oh, yeah, yeah. well enough to be able to jump into some college classes? Yeah, yes. yeah, of course. I'm, I'm taking, uh, actually, my mayor is a business management. Excellent. So, yeah, it's, re it's hel really helpful, yeah. So now, what would you ultimately like to do? Would you like to get your master's degree? Would you like to get your bachelor's degree? Do you, are you, where are you going to go with this? Well, um, you're going to graduate from CSM. Are you going to transfer to another college? Well, I would like Possibly. to, uh, yeah, I'll graduate from CSM, yeah, actually, yeah. Right. Get my A degree. Yeah, right, that's I want. excellent. Yeah. And now, do you, are you considering transferring to another college as well? Um, possibly? Yeah. yeah, possibly, yeah. Um, I'm thinking about it too, yeah. To get to another college, considering yeah. I mean, some another, yeah, like state university or something like that. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. That's good. So, but you want to have your own business. Yeah, that's what I want. That's uh, really my my goal. You that's know, your my, goal that's and one of your goal, dreams. Yeah. And I'm sure you'll uh, achieve uh, that. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> it takes a lot of hard work I to know, get through college, and that I think that builds you yeah. up to be able to go out there and do something like have and your actually, own business. And actually, yeah, I'm, I'm working too, besides studying. So right, I, I, I'm like uh, getting experience, you know, and where I'm working, the place where I'm working, yeah, my job. Okay, yeah. that's awesome. I'm proud of you. It's a lot of yeah. effort. It's scary to yeah, come to another I country know. and learn a new language oh, and yeah. jump into a new culture. So I, I admire you for that. It's very difficult. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Nickel, what do you consider to be the first transition that an ESL student needs to um, meet? What, what type of challenges do they have when they come here that they need to achieve? Well, the, in your uh, opinion? Elizabeth, uh, the researchers uh, have looked at this quite a bit and they've found that uh, you can learn sp <coughs> spoken conversational English in about two years, and but it's academic English is what it takes uh, some five to seven years. So Manuel's a good example. So he's come in and in, in two years his uh, speaking's fantastic, but what he needs is uh, uh, more classes for the reading and for the, for the uh, academics. For the academics, and that's what he's working on now. So that's if there's uh, the transition that he's working on right now is going from that first two years of conversational English to uh, academic English. And that's mostly what uh, we focus on at the community colleges, especially uh, as, well, the three schools, Skyline and uh, Kenyatta and College of San Mateo. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Now I had uh, another question for uh -huh. you. We only have a short time left. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to know, can you give me an example of a successful ESL student, um, one of 
one of your stories, if you have one, quickly. A real quick one is uh, uh, Helen Zhang and her son Andy. Uh, both of them have gone through our program, and both of them uh, graduated from Berkeley last year. I got the card in the mail that invited to their graduation. And, Perfect. Uh, um, so it's a, a daughter and son, and uh, Helen, it was actually, uh, we were looking to see if she could make it to the program today, but she couldn't make it. But, well, uh, thank you. Thank you for mm -hmm. sharing that. Thank you very much for coming, gentlemen. We'll be right back to wrap things up and to give you a preview of next, week, next week's show. I'd like to thank all of our guests who appeared on the show today for sharing their viewpoints. And don't forget to tune in next week when we'll talk about the Middle College program, fashion, and salsa dancing. I'm Elizabeth Myers. And I'm Scott Hosbach. And we'll see you again on College Matters. This program was produced entirely by students in the Broadcast and Electronic Media Department at the College of San Mateo. To request a copy of a Skyline, Kenyatta, or College of San Mateo catalog, log on to www.smccd.net.